Good morning creators and welcome to another UAFN tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create custom UIs for your Fortnite creative experiences. First thing you're going to do is open up your content drawer and I create a new folder just for better organization. You want to import your images by hitting import or right clicking and hitting import up here. Once you have your images, you're going to right click and create a user interface widget blueprint and create a user widget. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to go for the default name for now. And I'm going to double click on it to open it up. So inside of this menu, you've got many options, including these buttons. But one thing to note is that these buttons are currently not available to be used. Epic is working to make these available in a future update. But currently, the only way to use these is using Verse. So I'll leave the tutorial for that down below once I make it. Anyways, the first thing you want to do is place down a panel. There are multiple kinds of panels you can add. Um, based off of the alignments you want to do. Um, but canvas panels can be one of the best ones because it allows you to change the layout and the scale and position of all the elements. So we're gonna use a canvas panel. Inside of here, you can place down your images. And this is where it's pretty helpful to know the ratio size of your image. For example, mine is 16 by nine, so I can scale it based off of 16 by nine or I can just manually drag it out like you saw and just align it however I want. You'll see these green lines become invisible once they reach the edge. That's an also, also a pretty useful tool. And once I've properly aligned, I can end it there. You'll see I have my border on the edge and it looks great. There are some settings within here that you can use to better align, like the shear can shear it just does this it tilts the image uh, i don't want that but that's what that does angle can rotate and of course there's other settings as well one thing to remember is the z order which allows you to layer multiple elements on top of each other so if this is a higher z order that means it's going to be on top of an element if it's lower it's going to be below an element so for example if i place down this logo i want to make it a square so i'm going to make sure it is of a square ratio that's position oops size is 100 on both axes just make sure it's even and i can place it down like this that's maybe too big i can make it a little bit smaller and there you go so for example currently the z order is the same and i think there is an automatic layering system so it doesn't z fight but if you want to have this border on top you can change the z order and you'll see it's layered over the image if it's less then it'll be layered below the image like that so that's a pretty useful system another thing to note is that you can add additional things like a text block and of course these are images um, so a text block you add in and you have the usual settings right here. You change the text. So for example, if I want to say uh, game mode one. Wow, I'm messing up today. Set that. You'll see I have game mode one set. But yeah, I can change the appearance as well. For example, if I want to be maybe pink, it's pretty easy. If I want it to be transparent, I can change the alpha. So lower the alpha, the closer it gets to zero, the more transparent it's going to be. So you could have text over your screen, but still see behind the text if it's uh, if it's at a lower alpha. Of course, at one, it's not transparent. And your size, you change here. That's going to make it larger, of course. And this is actually a great way to demonstrate the alpha. You'll see it fades. You can change the skew amount as well. And this is just like the skew as we saw earlier. So if you want to create an italics, it's pretty easy. Um, letter spacing is just the spacing between the letters. You can change the fonts. Although currently I couldn't find a way to make the font work. That might not be compatible at the moment. Um, but eventually we should be able to change the font family, which would be cool. Um, typeface, you can change it to bold or medium. But of course black is gonna be the boldest. Um, if you want to import text with a different font, you have to create that text as an image first. So you can't just like import a font and then create a new 
you have in the text block, it's just gonna be an image. So if you're looking to add custom text with a custom font, that's how you do that. Um, I also recommend making sure all your images are PNGs with transparent backgrounds. Otherwise, they will be obstructing the player's view uh, unless they are, of course, unless the alpha is set down a bit. Um, you can also change the font material, which is interesting. So to do that, you want to create a new material. Let's open it up. And really the one thing you need to note is you need to change this to a user interface material. And you can change final color and screen position. Those are really the only two options you have um, other than opacity and opacity max. Um, so that's up to you. But I don't really want to use a material. I, actually, let's, let's just do one for fun. Let's go into Fortnite. Let's open up our textures, landscape. Let's draw out this and paste it into final color. Let's apply. And you'll see it applies that texture to my text like that. If I turn up the alpha, you'll see it more clearly. So it created a texture overlay for my text and the color still applies. So that's really unique way to create custom textures um, so the font doesn't look so boring all the time. You can also create an outline uh, and outlines can also have material textures. If I want to add my, I don't remember what it's called new material for. Yeah, let's find that. New material for, apply that. And I mean, it's black right now, so it's not blending. Um, so I need to change it to a different color. Yeah, you'll see that also has the texture applied to it. So it's real, also a really unique setting. You can also change the alpha of the outline down so that the outline just kind of has this like ghosty effect or just kind of like invisible effect. You also change the shadow offset and shadow color, um, which is just an additional text effect. And there's other options as well, just the usual options. But when you want to use the widget, you want to compile first, and then you're going to save, go back to your project. And there are really only two ways to implement this currently, and that is a HUD device or a pop-up dialog device, I believe it's called. Um, but I think the best way right now is the HUD device because I think the pop-up device is a little bit glitchy with this. So I'm gonna place down a HUD message device and go into our details. We don't need to have a message here, but I want to show on round start just so it's easier. I'm gonna keep the display time to infinite just because most UIs are gonna be infinite anyways. And you have the usual settings, place sound, placements, etc. You want to add a HUD widget here, and you can find your HUD widget right here. Place it down, and you can also layer it here. If you have multiple HUD message devices play it, placed at once, um, the layer determines which ones are be gonna be played. So if there are four that are trying to play out layer four, only one of them will play. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Priority, of course, also works in tandem with the layer. Um, but once you have all this set, you can launch your session and you'll see that it will appear in game once you start the game. Another thing to note uh, is that the HUD scale within your settings also affects the HUD scale in this. So for example, mine's way too large. If I have it at 100%, it's going to fit correctly though. And you'll see it fits my HUD correctly. So, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please, please consider subscribing, leave a like, and a suggestion down below. I hope you have an amazing day, and good luck creating.